Do you need help with ACLS ECG rhythms? Then you came to the right place. Welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I'm a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be going over some more ECG rhythms for the ACLS. These rhythms may show up either in your pretest or post test of your ACLS. Make sure you stay until the end of the video for a special bonus I will be giving you. Welcome to ACLS ECG strips part two. So if you are taking the ACLS, I'm going to assume that you pretty much already know your way around an EKG or an ECG, but things I will be talking about today, this is how you measure the PR interval and um, also the R to R interval is important. It's all important, but I will be focusing on the PR interval today and the R to R. So just as a recap, there's a five-step approach. There's a five-step approach to reading an ECG. You want, always want to look at what is the heart rate, what's the rhythm, what's the P wave doing, what's the PR interval, and what's what are the QRS complexes look like. So in this scenario, just from eyeballing it, this is about a six-second strip, and we can see that there it's about 40 beats per minute. 40 beats per minute, there is a P wave before every QRS complex, and it does appear regular. So what do you think this rhythm is? If you said sinus Brady, you are correct. I just broke this down in case you're watching this and you don't know what's going on in regards to how we calculate the rate that each little box here, that five of these little boxes equals one second, and then this is six seconds total. And then you just multiply 10, 20, 30, 40. So you, you can do either one of like one, two, three, four times 10 or 10, 20, 30, 40. And you see that the heart rate is about 40. So this rhythm is sinus Brady. In sinus Brady, like I said before, there's a P wave before each QRS complex. The P waves look alike. The PR interval is constant. It's regular. And the QRS rate is less than 60. And the rhythm is regular. Where does this rhythm originate from? It's the SA node. The pacemaker is still the SA node. The next rhythm that we have, is there a P wave before each QRS? Yes, it is. But the rhythm is, is going so fast that the P wave is about to be overtaken by the T wave. <laughs> but so are you seeing a P wave? Yes, we are seeing a P wave. Obviously, this is pretty fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the heart rate is about 130 per minute. So if it's that high, what are you thinking? If you said sinus tachy, you are correct. P waves before each QRS, they look alike. The PR is constant. So P to R is constant. Regular interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. The QRS rate is greater than 100 and there's narrow QRS complexes. The rhythm is regular and the pacemaker is the SA node. Next, we have this rhythm. Now with this rhythm, P waves are not easily seen. And what's the P to R interval? Well, it's really hard to determine because of how fast this, this rate is going and you can't really see the P waves, can you? The rhythm does appear to be regular. We're looking at the R to R and it does appear to be regular. So if you said that this is supraventricular tachycardia, you are correct. The P waves are not easily seen because they are buried in the T wave. PR is hard to tell because of the rapid rate and the P waves are not normally discernible. The QRS rate is greater than 150 to 250. The rhythm is regular and the pacemaker is above the ventricles, but typically not the SA node. So as you know, the fire, it, it, the impulse for the contraction starts at the SA node goes to the AV node, right? So what's occurring in SVT is there's a different area from the SA node that's also generating this impulse, uh, an electrical impulse, and it's causing a contraction. It's rapid because it's this area instead of just the SA node. So this is a very like rudimentary picture of the heart, <laughs> obviously not how it normally is, but we have the atria is here and the ventricles here, SA node, AV node, and it's firing over here. And what about this? What about this rhythm? So again, this is very similar to what you will see on the ACLS. And in fact, the ACLS has this as a combo rhythm. They call it an agonal rhythm asystole. So it'll be together and then you select that this is an agonal rhythm with asystole. So with an agonal rhythm, it's a very slow ventricular rhythm. 
It's often recognized as a terminal rhythm of a dying patient. It precedes asystole. So this is exactly what we're seeing here. We see the agonal rhythm and then it just goes into basically asystole. It's, it's a variant of idioventricular rhythm, but it's slower and occasionally less than 20 beats per minute. And here we're seeing that, right? This is 20, about 20 beats here. It has bizarre wide complexes, ap often absent atrial activity. We do see that there's no P waves here, so the atrial activity is absent. This has also been described as a variant of asystole since it invariably leads to asystole and death. And then once we get to asystole, everything is absent, right? There's no P wave, there's no PR interval, there's no QRS rate, there's no rhythm, there's no pulse, right? There's no electrical activity. This is cardiac arrest, very poor prognosis. Remember, you don't shock asystole. For ACLS, the little mnemonic or saying that you need to remember is defib for V-fib and pulseless v tac. Don't defib asystole, you won't get them back. The last rhythm that I have for you guys is this one. Do we see P waves? There are PR interval. If you said ventricular fibrillation, you are correct. There is fine V-fib. So depending on what textbook you read, some will say that there's fine V-fib, coarse V-fib, or intermediate. Others just say there's coarse and fine V-fib. But the way to determine, and honestly, the ACLS is just going to say V-fib. It's not going to be like, is this coarse V-fib or fine V-fib? Like, they wouldn't do that to you. But just so that you know, a little tidbit. So V-fib with waves that are three or more millimeters high. And again, you would just count those little boxes, one, two, three. So this is more than three millimeters high. That is known as coarse V-fib. And V-fib with a low amplitude waves, right? So how, if it's, if the waves are just, if they're less than three milliliters, that's fine V-fib. So yes, this one is fine V-fib because I count three and the waveforms don't go above the three millimeters. If you stayed until the end, bonus for you is basically what you do is you email me, subscribe, like, turn on the notifications, send me a screenshot that you subscribed to Bridget at nursingwithprofessorb.com and I send you a viewable link. You will not be able to download it, but you will be able to view it. If you want a downloadable link, then I will have this uploaded to, I will have this available to my Patreon members as downloadable. So that means that you'd be able to print it out. And you can find my Patreon account on my webpage. So my Patreon account is right here. It's also in the about section down here, Patreon. And you can um, become a supporter of my Patreon. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on that notification bell, and let me know how you did on your ACLS if these ECG rhythms helped you.